fun. Hey, Tyler. Hey, oh, how's it going? Super good. How are you? I'm doing excellent. I'm working in a different location, which is the beauty yeah. of a remote company. So you'll see a little fishbowl behind me, and we're in a co working space down in Phoenix this week. Awesome. I think it's called yeah. the department, if I can read the sign correctly. Is it on the behind? Me? Yes. Yep. There you go. It's called the department. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> a little free advertisement for them. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about the sales process. You're leading a mastermind group, which um, helps kind of train and educate other agencies on how to run their business. And one of the things that we're talking about this week, obviously, is near and dear to my heart is sales, um, the sales process, uh, how to position yourself, and really what that looks like. And a lot of organizations, as they scale and they grow from maybe a one or $2 million organization to a many million dollar organization, really need to change up their sales process. Yeah. So but kind of with that in mind, I have a bunch of questions for you. I love it. Yeah, no, it's so true. It's, it's what got you from zero to a million. It's going to probably be harder work to get from a million to 5 million or whatever, but your whole process changes because you're probably selling something entirely differently than you did in the early days. Um, so we've had to learn that and we're continually learning that and trying to pass on our knowledge to people who listen to this as well as the mastermind groups. So this is gonna be fun to talk through. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. So we have built a business around inbound leads and generating, you know, having a good reputation and, and trying to convert users onto our site. But what yeah. are some other lead generation ideas or tactics that sales teams can use? Wow. It's a big, like blue sky question. Um, so a couple of things that we've had success in from an inbound lead standpoint. And so one, obviously you can do your own content marketing, you can do your own right content, SEO, ranking, paid out. I mean, you can do all sorts of different things from a marketing standpoint, but one of the ways that we've had success is being like building partnerships with different companies. So the two that have really helped us grow, one of them is um, HubSpot. And being a partner with HubSpot and, you know, building that partnership actively, not, you know, you get out of it what you put into it um, with it like anything. And so, um, and then the other one is StoryBrand. And so we've got kind of positions in different directories and we work to reach out to their sales teams to, you know, get potential opportunities or at least have a seat at the table for those opportunities. Um, so that one's been really helpful for us. Um, there's like local things too, to get involved in. And so some businesses, you know, aren't national or aren't remote or aren't trying to get business outside of that and they're trying to go you know just whatever 25 mile radius or something in their cities and you know doing presentations at chambers of commerce i remember doing that in like early days because you're just trying to drum up business yeah and um you know you never know what's going to happen or the conversations or the people that you're going to talk to and you know different you know, how you're building your represent or your um your reputation at that point you know and what you're good at and so like that kind of thing's helpful trying to get on different webinars is helpful um, you know, really it's just about building relationships and you don't know where those relationships are going to go. Um, and so there's lots of different ways to do it. You know, I think we're kind of starting to get into the spot now where we're starting to figure out, Hey, is there a cold outreach type of an opportunity that we can start reaching out to different clients that would be on our, you know, our dream 100 list, if you will. Um, because we're trying to be, be a little more tailored to not just what walks in our door, but more so where we're going and where we want to go and the types of individual or, uh, enterprises we want to work with. Um, and so there's lots of tactics around that as well, but as you're getting started, it's really, you're just kind of hitting the pavement. You're trying to knock on doors, um, and, you know, figure out what you, who you want to be, be genuine in it and just start going for it. You know, you don't, you don't want to make it perfect before it happens because you have no idea what that looks like, right. but yeah. those are some ideas. I don't know if you have anything you'd add to those, but that's, I guess, off the cuff a little bit. But. No, I a hundred percent agree. And one of the things that I've really seen shift in our business is, uh, we started to partner not just with StoryBrand and HubSpot, but other organizations that help businesses in different ways, whether it's, yeah. you know, someone in the financial industry that has their niche of clients that they maybe consult with, but they don't have a marketing or web development wing of their of their organization, so we can help support that. Or, you know, even yeah. if it's just, you know, helping local businesses scale and grow, there are, you know, regional consultants that help too. So we've really yeah. drummed up some of those relationships as well, where maybe we're not necessarily doing work for an individual, but they kind of can connect us to their network. Um, yeah. And that's been super awesome for us too. Yeah. I used to call those the kingpins back in yeah. sales, like consumer product sales years of my life where you're trying to go after like the one to many opportunities where yep. one person can help open doors um, that maybe you couldn't on your own, but you know, 
being yourself in that process obviously is important but um that was a huge win at least in early days for us was just like that one to many so like where can it go um and you don't know where it's going to go oftentimes right. and but at the same standpoint those often lead to really cool working relationships too so absolutely so once a lead agrees to meet or books a meeting what should a sales process look like well I would say what I've learned about it is, is that you need your sales process to be a reflection of your company values and who your company is. And so um, if you are wanting to build a culture and build a brand that is, you know, service oriented and, you know, great to talk to and fun and, you know, transparent and all those things, then that's how your, serve, your sales process has to start. Um, and so those, some of those attributes that I listed off are ways in which we decided to build our company and kind of things that are threaded throughout our culture. And so um, one of the things that we started with was, you know, if someone, if inbound leads, so somebody kind of fills out a form on a side or reaches out to us, we have, you know, a time frame that we try to get back to them and we create a video with Vidyard that's embedded in an email. And, and since we wanted to build a remote company from the early days before it was cool to go remote, I feel like I've said that a million times in the last couple couple months. Um, but, you know, like that needs to be a genuine video or genuine kind of representation of what your company is. And so um, we've kind of started with that being that introduction to very similarly to if you were meeting in person. Um, and what does that look like? And are you, you know, normal or are you awkward? Is there weird unmade beds in the background? And Amanda's going to laugh because we just had this conversation. Um, but are there weird, funny backgrounds or, you know, like those types of things as a professional, you know, it's, it's how you come across right away. Um, and so we chose to kind of start with that in the sales process. So where there's this like one-to-one -one type of a personalized outreach mm -hmm. and it's not a robotic type of a thing. That might work great for other companies, but not for us in the services industry where we're around building trust. And that's a lot of service companies that are trying to do that. And so um, that was our first step to kind of get things kicked into what we've designed in our sales process and our sales pipeline. So I don't actually remember your question on that, how far you want me to talk through that, but I feel like that was the first step at least. <laughs> no, it absolutely was. And I think really what it highlights too is like, you need to have a process when a lead comes in. Yeah. Um, sometimes if somebody submits a form on a website, it might get sent to an admin or it might get sent to somebody who's not consistently checking their inbox. And like that yeah. shouldn't happen. Um, if it goes to an admin, that's fine, but then it needs to immediately go to the right person and there needs to be a process, a way to follow up the next steps. And yeah. I think you really outlined how clear, you know, how that needs to happen really clearly. Yeah. I guess the um, only thing I would add to that a little bit would be just the idea of, um, I think. I guess I'm trying to figure out how to frame this without going too far down in the sales pipeline. Um, but you really want to draw, like in the early days, you're just taking business and it's more of like a, hey, what can I do for you thing? And you don't want to lose that mentality as you build a business and build a sales org. But at the same standpoint, you do want to steer clients and prospects towards what you know works. And yeah. so and like in our process, we built different products that we call them, you know, we productize a lot of our service uh, services that help, you know, get things started, whether it's foundational work that people need or lead generation work that people need. Mm -hmm. And we're pushing clients towards these uh, products that we've, you know, created over the years of experience that we know are help kind of kick things off and get, get results early on. Um, and so it's, the sales process is designed to move people down that down those steps or kind of through those phases whereas in the early days you're just taking whatever and so you don't really oftentimes have a sales process you're just trying to get reps in front of people um and so that would i would just say like the importance of really thinking through like working from the end in mind like do you want them to be a project client or a retainer client or buy a certain product well what do you want them to do to get there I feel like I'm talking a lot with my hands and my hands disappear. So I'm not waiting. I'm waving, but I'm also talking to my hands. Um, but you really want to like think for me in mind and design a process that gets the clients or prospects to where you want them to, to land. If that makes, does that make sense? Yes. But now I have another question for you. Oh yeah. Good. So we we're talking a lot about foundational work and the sales process and all of that, but you have to position your services or your company in the right way. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about how, you know, a, a sales org should position themselves during this process. What are some of the things that they should keep in mind? Yeah, good question. Um, positioning is, is every, everybody you talk to you is going to have a different kind of take on positioning. 
Um, there's lots of ways to do it. You can position yourself by being a product that only sells to the financial services or only sells to SaaS based, based technology clients, or, you know, you can be that hyper niche, um, or you could be centered around a service. Hey, we only do this type of service. And so we're really good at this thing, whether it's in our industry, maybe it's building websites or it's creating brands or it's messaging or it's copy or content marketing, whatever. And you can be known for like that thing. Um, so there's lots of different ways to, to kind of create that positioning, but it's super important to figure that out because how are you supposed to, like, you can't just be, Hey, we're good at everything and super right. general and big swath across, you know, like, yeah. Oh yeah, we can do anything you want. Um, and then how do you communicate what you do? So say for instance, you know, you're running into somewhere, like I'm walking around this, we're co-working space and people ask, you know, what do you do? And so you're able to be, be hyper like niched or focused on this is what we do. And so that then maybe it's helping them later on, or maybe they talk to somebody else later on. So it's kind of communicating or creating the story and the problems that you solve for individual clients. And then that being like the way that you're kind of steering that positioning, if that makes sense. So that's kind of been our take on it. Um, like I said, lots of people say, you know, the riches are in the niches. Well, you don't always have to think that a niche is, oh, we only work with banks or we only work with whatever type right. of an industry. Um, that is a way to do it for sure. Um, and it's helpful because you know, you got, you can get proven results for those specific niches. Um, but I think for our, us, it's been a little bit more like product or excuse me, service or like hyper-focused on a specific service that we're really good at. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree with that. Um, so kind of this next question is kind of a result of what we've already been talking about. Um, it's super important to have a really good foundation to any work that you're going to, to do whether it's a website mm -hmm. or a marketing strategy or branding or creating a new brand. Yeah. But oftentimes, um, and that's for us, but it, you know, other organizations have different services or solutions that they provide. But a lot of times in order to like win a client, people give away work for free. Mm -hmm. They do all the research up front for free. They do a lot yeah. of things for free. Um, is there a time and place for that? And how can that impact your relationship with the client afterwards? Uh, yeah, yes and yes. <laughs> um, I think we've steered away from it a little bit, you know, as far as if you want us to really do a deep dive into your business, like I, most people at this point aren't doing those types of things for free. Um, I mean, even down to like the construction industry, some people have a certain, like you have to pay whatever, $600 to have somebody come out to do an estimate, to know what it's going to cost to redo whatever remodel or, or whatever type of thing you're doing. Um, and that's pretty normal, um, I think, in most industries. I think in our industry specific around digital and around marketing and around sales consulting and those types of things, I think people have an expectation that it's done for free. Um, and I, I don't know why that's the case, but I mean, it's kind of one of those like, hey, I feel like something's off, like with my shoulder or something. I, you're not going to go to a doctor and expect him to see you for free for two hours and give you a diagnosis and then schedule surgery. You have to pay for that. That's a very normal right. thing. Um, and so I would say it's pretty normal across most industries outside of what we do. Um, so we've kind of pushed more towards, you know, really helping provide value on the phone on with calls or Zoom calls here, you know, when we're talking to clients and really helping like understand their business and really what their problem is and maybe even giving some high level ideas so that if they walked away, they could implement them. Right. Um, but we don't really ever give away the how if that makes sense. And so it's more of the, the what and the why and less of the how. And that's where our secret kind of secret sauce, if you will, comes in. Um, but that's, we've kind of designed these, these product, when I was saying productize our services, we've kind of designed those around building some of the strategy, doing some of the deep dive, doing some of the audits that are required and all those types of things, just because we learn so much about the business. And then we can give like feedback, like immediately, you know, stuff that right. would be quick shifts that would impact things are, or, or whatever. So um, I think it, that's, it is a hard one because it's super funny that people expect it in the digital space, but they don't expect it in many of other, if I have to drive to a doc shop, it's like that example or something like that. So I don't know why that's the case, but it is the case right now. So it is. And I think too, like that you can give value and ideas to some extent for free in the sales process. Totally. Um, like, yeah. you know, we've even talked about some of the accounts that are like, our dream accounts that we'd love to work with. Like, I would love to work with Airstream. Am I going sure. to get a meeting by just calling them and be like, hey, I want to talk to you about marketing? <laughs> right. Like, no, but if I come up with, you know, if, if in our outreach program, we come up with a really kitschy and unique way that's tailored to them and maybe has a cool concept or idea behind it, 
yeah, that is yeah. putting some thought into something. It is giving a little something away for free, but it's not giving away our services, our work, or our brains. Um, so yep. I think there, there can be a little bit of a difference, even you know, between the kinds of clients that you're going after versus, um, yeah, you know, your standard process. Yeah, there's some clients and some enterprises that do require a, more of a pitch, if you will. Yeah. Um, and so you are going to have to show your value. You're going to have to show your ideas, maybe add campaign ideas or creative yep. ideas or whatnot. Um, but it doesn't mean that you have to give it to them for free. You're just presenting. This is what it could look like. And so you're yep. giving them a ta more of a taste of it um, yep. than the whole, you know, than the whole meal kind of thing. Um, so it just really just depends. I think it does depend on who you're going after. Even if you go back to positioning, are you selling a, you know, a $2,000 product, a $20 product, a $25,000 product? Um, and then generally the higher product, their higher kind of ticket items, you're going to have to prove a little bit more before someone's going to say yes. Um, and so some of those require a little bit more pitching, as I say. So. Absolutely. I love it. Well, this has been a super fun conversation. Of course, it's about sales, so I love it. Um, <laughs> but it was great to chat with you and get your insights. Absolutely. Fun. Well, see you later. See ya.